Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another monthly meal prep. It has been a while since I have filmed one of these videos and it's just been a while since I've been posting. If you guys have not been following along on my vlog channel and my home channel, I have done some moving, we've done some tiny living as you can see and it doesn't take away from my meal prepping. If you guys have watched for a long time then you know that every two weeks I do some meal prepping to put things into the freezer just to make life a a little bit easier and just to make it so that I don't have to constantly mess up my kitchen I can do it all at one time and it just saves me a lot of time in the long run so obviously with living tiny now this definitely comes into play big time just because I don't want to always be making a mess of my tiny little kitchen back here and always be doing dishes so having a lot of things prepped in advance helps so much and I do have access to a freezer that's outside of my tiny home, so I'm able to put things in there and be able to pull from them throughout the two weeks until I meal prep again. So anyways, without too much more rambling, I have my table pulled out down here, so I have a great workspace here in the middle, and um, I have all of my recipes ready. If you guys want to follow along, the recipes will be typed out below, and then you can also pin the recipes with the pin links below if you want to add them to your Pinterest page so you can easily find them later. When I do these meal preps, they're kind of random things. They're often things for breakfast, lunch. Um, I might throw in a dinner here or there. Uh, it can be a lot of different things. So I'm going to continue doing step-by-step -step instructions. I know you guys have been really enjoying that and it's been super helpful for you. And I think I don't have anything more to say other than let's get cooking. All right, so when I'm going to be doing a day of cooking and have a lot going on, my favorite thing to do is throw something in the crock pot. So I went ahead and put a venison roast into my pressure cooker, but I just used the slow cooker option. And this is pretty much how I make my beef roasts as well. I put in a stick of butter, and then this day I was in a hurry, so I normally would cut up an onion, but instead I put some onion powder in, some liquid smoke, and then I also dumped in a bag of baby carrots. This was a great dinner option for us and also there was leftovers that we could eat throughout the week. The next recipe that I prepped was my healthy chicken nuggets. I've made these so many times and I know a lot of you have started making them as well and I wanted to make a lot this day. This could maybe be the biggest batch I've ever made. I used six chicken breasts which is so many nuggets and this is supposed to be kind of like a dupe for Chick-fil-A's chicken nuggets. They're super delicious and because they're so healthy, I actually eat them myself. So they're an easy lunch option to pull out of the freezer. I get questions on how to reheat them. Sometimes I put them in the microwave, sometimes the oven, sometimes the air fryer. It's really however you want them to be. And then the next thing that you're gonna do is actually pour on some pickle juice. And I get questions about what type of pickle juice I like to use. I personally like to use dill, but you can use whatever you wanna use. And then one other little note about these is do make sure that you cut them up to be around the same size so that they bake up at the same time and they all get finished and cooked through at the same time. So I took a little break and I actually went and got my nails done. 
But the next recipe that I'm doing is some lemon waffles. And for some reason, for a while, I have really been wanting to try to create a lemon waffle recipe. And this one turned out really good. So the first thing I did was zest one whole lemon to get all of the rind off the outside or the zest part. And then I went ahead and got a tablespoon of lemon juice out of that lemon as well. I just got this little lemon squeezer and I love it so much. I'll leave the link below for it. It actually shows you on the side how much juice you have, which is great when you're doing a recipe like this. The last thing I added in was some lemon essential oil. I know not everybody's into oils, but it did help to add an extra kick of lemon to this recipe. The last thing that I add into this recipe is some blended up oatmeal to kind of make an oat flour. So all you have to do is take your oatmeal, throw it in your blender and or food processor, anything that'll get it nice and fine like a flour. And that'll work out perfect to give you a little bit of a smoother consistency to your waffles. And also I wanted to add a note that if you're, depending on the milk that you use, if your batter is a little bit on the thin side, you can just add a little bit more of that oat flour. If you guys have watched my channel often, you know how much I use this little waffle maker and I love it so much. So I just put a little bit of butter over the irons and honestly, this entire batch of waffles, I did not re-oil the waffle iron at all. So it does a pretty good job at being non-stick and um, it also makes them the perfect size to go in the freezer and be thrown into the toaster. The next thing that I prepped up for the freezer was some breakfast bowls and I've made these before and I know you guys have asked if the eggs hold up well. I personally think they do. I pull them right out of the freezer and put them right into the microwave so that um, they're warmed up and I have never had a problem with the eggs being really oddly textured. And the other thing I wanted to let you know is as you can check out the ingredients and the instructions below, I'm also going to leave the nutrition information for each of these bowls because these are keto friendly and if you're somebody that is counting your calories or anything like that, you will know around how much you'll be eating with each bowl. I had just figured it out for myself so I decided I would go ahead and share it with you all so that you have an idea of how much you're eating. And then I actually fried up each of the bowls separately because I have a small frying pan, but if you have a larger frying pan, you definitely would be able to just fry them all up together and then divide them out. It was just easier for me to keep track of how much butter was in each bowl as well to fry them up individually.
I picked up these soup and salad containers. They hold about two cups. I know that Target carries these as well. They're great because you can take them straight from the freezer and put them into the microwave. So I wanted to also put together some sweet treats, especially with the holidays being around. So I whipped up these brownie bites and they're pretty simple to make. Also, I do try to give you guys different options when it comes to some of the special ingredients in case you don't have them. You can definitely use regular sugar instead of the sugar replacement that I was using or honey. It's very easy to swap those things out. And we all know that chocolate chips are measured with your heart, not a measuring cup. Am I right? <laughs> Next, I went ahead and put the brownie batter into this mini muffin um, silicone pan and they baked up really well in this. I love using silicone when it comes to muffin tins. They're just so much easier to clean. Once I had them in there, I actually pulled out my keto crate and this is not sponsored by them, but I do have a discount code for you guys, but I love this. This is one of the few subscriptions that I get in the mail. And if you are somebody that's diabetic or even gluten free, this would be awesome. You don't have to just be keto and they're really good at sending both sweet and salty things. I love this. It's great for on the go, in the car, adding to recipes. As you can see, they actually sent a brownie mix in this month's box. Just so many great options to either cook with or just quick snacks for on the go. So I actually grabbed out these ice chips. Um, they're made with xylitol because I love peppermint chocolate. So I put a little bit of each of them onto the top of some of the brownie bites and they worked out perfectly and they had such great flavor. So now we're back to the nuggets. So you want to let them marinate in the pickle juice for at least a day or like a few hours. I've done it in a few hours before. The longer you leave them in there, obviously the stronger of a vinegar um, marinade they're going to have, which I think is delicious on chicken. And then you're going to whisk up some eggs. And I'm not giving you exact measurements on this stuff because it depends on how many chicken breasts you're doing, but you get the general idea. And then you also want to put together some almond flour, some salt, and some pepper. Paprika. You can also use breadcrumbs for this. So if you're someone that's not gluten free or worried about it being keto friendly or anything like that, you can definitely use regular breadcrumbs from the store. So you want to give them their egg bath first and then you go ahead and put them into the breadcrumbs or the almond flour and put them on the pan. Everything I made this day went into the freezer and it was such a great start to getting back to meal prepping regularly. If you guys are new around here, I would love it if you subscribed and joined my channel. Don't forget you can pin these recipes below in the description box. Leave me a comment. I love reading your comments and responding to the ones I can and I will see you guys in my next video.